Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be painting the great Bray Shaman from the Beasts of Chaos. Here's the great Bray Shaman, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted him step by step using contrast paints to a tabletop ready standard. This is going to be the leader for my Warcry Warband and this will feature on the channel as part of the ongoing campaign. So let's get started and I'll show you how I painted him. And this time I did a primer with grey paint and then I went over with a dry brush of Wraithbone. But usually I would just use the Wraithbone Citadel Colour Undercoat and to be honest I think that's the best way for me. I prefer doing that. So I would recommend the Citadel Colour Wraithbone Contrast Undercoat and all my models I assemble with the Citadel Plastic Glue. And the paints we'll be using in this video will be mostly the contrast paints but we will use the lead belcher and a couple of layer paints as well. And the brush I use and can recommend is the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush. But I also use the Kalinsky Synthetic Number no. 2 and that's my favourite brush at the moment. Right, let's get started with some contrast Gilliman flesh. And this is going to go on to all the areas of skin that we can see on the miniature. With this Gillum and Flesh, it's a really nice skin tone. And if you put it on heavily, it's going to be quite dark. But I don't want it to be too dark, so I'm going quite thin here. And so usually I'd put quite a bit of this paint on, but I'm going quite thin. And I'm almost like putting it on as if it's a felt tip pen, kind of running it across it. Um, where there's the recesses, though, and in those darker shadows, I'm being a little bit more generous with that paint and putting a little bit more in. And I'm just starting and ending my brush strokes there where I want most of that paint to build up. And then for the rest of the areas, the more flatter areas that I want quite light, then I'm just kind of putting a little bit of paint over or, and, you know, like that felt it pen technique, just kind of almost painting it on like that. And then in the face, we've got a lot of recesses there, not of areas of shadow. So I do want some darker areas. So I'm putting a little bit more paint again in there. I'm really forcing it into those, the eye sockets, the nostrils and the mouth and those kind of areas and then on the raised areas just wicking it away if I put too much and I find if I just run the brush on some kitchen towel then that can take some of the excess paint off the brush and then I can wick it away from the model if I do put too much on so there we go I'm just going over that little shoulder area now I'm doing the hand and it's good to use like the contours of the model to wipe the paint off the brush almost and then the contrast paint's awesome because it wants to go in those recesses and those deep areas where the shadows are so you can see once you put it on once you have a pool of it it almost gets sucked into those crevices and that's where it wants to end up but uh, you do have to guide it around and so having like a decent sized brush like a number two is good because you can then push and pull that paint around without it drying too quickly and that's something to be aware of with contrast paints. If you overwork it once it's started to dry, then that's when you can get these kind of stains and it looks really messy. So you've almost got to get it, you've got to get used to the balance of how much paint you can put on and how long you've got to work with it. Take into account the temperature of the model, temperature of the paint, even the temperature of the water you're dipping the brush in at first to kind of get it loosened up a little bit. So all these things have an effect, but it's all trial and error and you'll soon get used to it once you've done a few models. Right, next we're on to some contrast Griffhound orange, and this is going to go on all the areas of the cloak that we want red. And we're going to do two layers of paint, and I've done this on the Sirens of the Flame, and I think it worked really nicely. We're going to do the Griffhound orange as a first layer, and then later on we'll get some red and, and mix it with some contrast medium, almost like a glaze. And then that will give us a nice red kind of orangey colour, but the orange will act more as a highlight than anything. And so that works really nicely. So I'm going to use that same effect here. And that will also tie in with the terrain that I built that I want these guys to kind of come from and or originate from. And so that's their like home base, if you like. So I want it all to match and make sense. And so all these robes um, are either made from the skin of animals they've hunted or maybe they've picked some berries or whatever. And then they've used that to stain the cloak. So I want it all to make sense and tie in with the terrain. And so, you know, using this orangey red works with the terrain I built. And you can see a video on that. That's up on the channel where I made this kind of desert badlands terrain all out of uh, styrofoam. So, yeah, check that out if you'd like to. But here we go now. I'm going over the cloth areas and you can see how I'm putting up quite a bit on there. And that's because we've got a few creases and that's where this works really nice, the contrast paint. 
where you've got cloth with lots of folds, you can really get some nice effects just with one coat of contrast paint. So you certainly don't have to do this method of doing orange first and then a, a kind of glaze of red. You can just use one colour. You could just go straight in with red and put a nice thick coat of red on and that will give you some nice effects too. But I think the orange highlight works really nicely. And so there we go. I'm just going in there, being really careful not to get on the other parts. Now I'm going back to some Gillum and Flesh because I didn't notice this little hump at the back. And so I'm just going to fill that in and push that around, making sure that most of the paint goes where it kind of meets the other materials. Now we're on to some Contrast Basilicanum Grey. And this grey is going to go on the hooves. And so they've all got grey hooves in the warband, so I've kept that all the same. And the horns I've done differently. Some have got grey horns, some have got more kind of more bone colour horns. But for this model, I've gone for grey just on the hooves. And we'll use it again later on for the fur. But at this stage, I was thinking that I wanted to go a different route with the fur and do it almost like white. Um, but I did end up doing it grey, as you'll see as we get going. But here we are. I'm just doing the hooves first here and getting that grey in there nicely. I also use the grey for patches of this kind of cloak. And this is one of the key features of this model, I think. This cloak's really cool, this patchwork. It's almost something your gran would make if she was like a serial killer. Some crazy uh, like blanket all made of different skin from their enemies that they piece together or victims. So pretty grim, which is obviously awesome too. And so this is going to have all different colours, again, from victims, from different beasts in the environment they come from, and from all different things. So I'm kind of looking, I don't want to get the same colour next to each other in two patches. So I'm kind of going to do one patch, and then I'm going to like skip a patch, and then do the one after that grey. And so you'll see as we move on to the next one, almost like a checkerboard if you think of it that way. But I'll use about three or four different colours. So the main thing I'm doing is spacing out this grey first, and then I'll base all the other colours around it. So I haven't planned where the colours are going to go yet. I'm going to do the grey first, just where I think it looks nice, like having the grey next to the orange, and then go from there. Next, we're going to take the Contrast Snake Bite Leather, a great paint, and this is going to be a really nice leather effect for this little piece of armor that he's got on his arm. And Snake Bite Leather is really great. This is one of my favorites. It gives a really nice effect. Again, just one coat, and it's going to give you a nice shadow, and it's going to leave the raised areas highlighted enough. And again, we're looking for tabletop ready standard. So, you know, I want this to be quick. I want to just do one layer as, as often as possible. And so the contrast paints are great for that. And the main thing is to do it nice and neat. Just because it's tabletop ready doesn't mean it can be scruffy. It can still look cool and, and really, you know, take your time, make it neat. But just doing one coat of paint really saves a lot of time. So you don't have to do like a base, a, a shade and then two layers. You can just go straight in with one coat of paint. And I think the, that's why I really like the contrast paints. So here now I'm doing all the straps and everything that go on and hold these skulls on. I've done some patches on the back already and I'm going to go back to the cloak in a second as well. And so I'm just using the tip of the brush here. So I'm not putting too much paint on. I'm not swamping this with paint. I'm just um, getting enough on the brush that it doesn't dry out and then I can just almost paint it on like a felt tip pen again. But once I move to the back now and on the cloak, there's going to be some areas with some nice folds and that's when I really start putting more paint on. So I really get my brush in the pot a few times, back and forth, really pushing it into those crevices. You can see there's quite a lot of paint there and that's going to seep in nicely. And I'm just using these natural colours which all work together like where the stitching is. I'm just going over that stitching, it's all going to blend nicely. And again, with these tones, they're going to leave, certainly the snake bite leather, they're going to leave a nice highlight. And you could go back and paint all the stitches afterwards, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go with these different layers and uh, let them do the work for me. So again, I'm spacing that snake bite leather out. I don't want two sections of material with the same colour. So I'm kind of keeping that idea of a checkerboard and then Bearing in mind we've got two other colours or even three that we can put on if we want to. And so we've got lots of options. But the main ones I wanted were the grey and the snake bite leather. I think they work really nicely together. And that grey is going to match his kind of hair as well. So that's going to work cool. And there we go. I'm just going on this big section. This is the larger section. So I wanted that to be the snake bite leather. And uh, this is such a natural looking paint. I really like it. Okay, now I took some Contrast Fire Slayer 
flesh and I just wanted to see how this would work and so I've done that on a section and this really comes out like skin so this looks like it's kind of almost a fresh piece of skin that he stretched out maybe dried it a little bit before stitching it together with some of the older bits that he's pieced together so I really like this idea of this being some grim patchwork victim cloak and um, I'm really running with that narrative I think now and so there we go again just spacing it out having a look at the model where you know decide where you think it will look nice with that color will this work against that orange and then just placing it where you think it will work best now i'm taking some contrast cycle brown and technical contrast medium and i'm mixing together here i've done about two parts medium to one part brown and this is quite a dark brown so i don't want it to be like really dark and heavy and but i want an extra brown kind of color in there so i've just used that contrast medium to thin it out and um, that's going to give us a nice color and again it's going to contrast with all these other colors and i also want to put the glaze of red over this later and so that will give us an another color again so that's what i'm thinking about as i'm doing this seeing if it would work on its own with one coat but also in my mind i'm thinking i could put that red over it and the next color i've gone for is the dark oath flesh another great contrast and the the flesh tones in the contrast paints are awesome you can get some really nice effects and they're all they're all quite different and you know the heavier you put it on the darker they go and you can experiment with different layer paints underneath it if you want it to be like more brown for example so things like that so you've got lots of options with this and again we've got a nice crease there so i put it on quite heavy and um, again this is a nice skin one so a nice fresh piece for the victim cloak and then i'm looking at the other sections and popping it in there too our next paint is just Seigel brown on its own this time and this is going to be used for the wood and i've used this for all the bows i've used it for all the stuffs the handles of the axes for the whole war band and the idea is this is from some kind of tree that grows in the environment they're from and it's some kind of prized after wood um, that all their weapons are made from and so this really dark wood is going to work nicely against all these other natural colors i think and it's going to make the weapon stand out a little bit and um, you could dry brush up over this as well if you want to that's going to help bring out a bit more of the grain of the wood but i'm just going for one coat so i'm going to put one coat of this on and be happy with that right now we're going to tidy up a bit and i've got some base wraith bone paint and now i'm going over any areas where i've kind of made some mistakes gone over the lines got little spots of paint on the areas that I, I haven't painted yet and so i'm just tidying up with this wraith bone and so the idea is you'd use the same color paint you obviously for your that you use for your undercoat and because i used gray and then a dry brush a light dry brush of wraith bone i can get away with the wraith bone here to touch things up and also i'm going over mostly the most raised areas which i want a bit brighter anyway so that's going to work fine so just really taking my time at this stage to examine the model from all different angles and make sure i cover up any mistakes i've made and then once that's dry i took some contrast basilicanum gray and now i've gone back and i thought i'm going to do the hair i tried using the contrast white paint but i just didn't like the look it looked exactly like the primer or the undercoat to be fair um, and i wanted something a little bit darker with more contrast so i've gone for the basilicanum gray and then we'll dry brush this hair just a tiny bit right at the end and so i'm putting this on now and with all these little folds and where the hair overlaps you've got lots of recesses there and so i'm being quite generous with how much i put on but also balancing that with being careful not to make any mistakes and get it onto that orange cloak all the other areas we've already painted and all the goats in the warband have got this little goatee so we can't forget that so that's going to have some basilicanum gray on it too and then once we've done the little beard we're going to go down and do all the, the kind of fur that's growing on the legs so just on the thighs so we're going to go in there and be quite generous with that again like being careful and it's good to like i find i brace my arms on the table so i've got a nice steady grip the paint model holder is touching the table and the mat so that's nice and steady and then i always move the model so that i can keep that position so i move the model rather than myself and that gives me a lot more control and i find i don't shake as much and i can get in to those areas without making too many mistakes so there we are now i'm just finishing off this little bit of fur that's growing on the back of the calves there above the hooves and then that's pretty much all the hair done 
And now I'm taking some contrast basilicanum grey and some contrast skeleton horde. And I'm opening them both at the same time. This is going to be for the horns. And I'm putting the grey on first and I'm putting it just on the tips. And I'm using, again, the contour of the model to wipe that paint off. And I'm being quite generous. I'm putting quite a fair bit on that tip there. And then I'm taking the skeleton horde. I clean my brush first. Then I take the skeleton horde, put a coat of that on, go up as close as you can to that blob. And then once you've got that on, start blending it together. And I add a little bit more of the skeleton horde at that stage just to give that little wet blend and let it kind of naturally fade between the two colours. And then that's all we need to do for that bit. So this is a nice quick and easy way to get a natural fade when you're doing bone just add a little bit of gray at the tip or even at the base and you get a really nice effect so there you go you can see how that's worked and when that dries it looks really cool and then for the rest of the skulls i'm just going with a nice thick coat of skeleton horde i'm not using any basilicanum gray now just skeleton horde and this paint dries quite pale so you can be quite generous with this and you know i really like it to go in those eye sockets and give me a real dark shadow so i put quite a lot on and i really work it in there and push it in and then i make sure all the recesses have got a fair amount of paint and it might look a lot at this stage but once it dries you get a really nice effect you get those nice shadows then but the raised areas with this particular paint always tend to look really nice so now i'm going over the backs of the skulls as well again just covering it even though they're smooth flat areas putting loads on and let the contrast paint do the work now it's time for some technical medium and some flesh terrors red contrast and for this time I mix three parts medium to one part red and this is going to be a glaze that we put over all the orange sections of material that we painted previously. And so this isn't going to give us a really deep red cloak and it's, but it's going to kind of benefit from the orange underneath as a highlight so we get like a free highlight of orange if you like and having those two colors working together I, th I think works really nicely and also a lot of the models especially from the chaos models for Warcry they've got like a lot of red in them already so I don't want anything really red um, so I think doing it like this is a, a kind of nice balance so you haven't got the same color working through all your different war bands so I think that's a really good thing to do. Okay, now I'm taking some Agoras Dunes and again that contrast medium and I've done the same thing, three parts medium to one part Agoras Dunes and that's going to give us a kind of deep cream colour that will be good for this kind of sash that's going over his face, almost like a scarf coming down and so that's going to give us a nice colour and you know you could I could have used Skeleton Horde here but I just wanted something a little bit different and that little bit of yellow in it is going to work nicely. Now it's time for the lead belcher and this will be for this one piece of metal on this miniature and that's going to be at the top here and so there's not much metal on this one but when we do some of the others some of the other fighters from the warband they do have a lot of metal armor and i'll do a separate video so you can see the different models being painted and the different paints and techniques that you might want to use okay now we're going to take some Abaddon Black, this is a base paint, and just with a little bit of water, I'm just going to give the very base here a complete coat of black. I'm not going to cover the rock, that's already painted in the grey and wraith bone, but I want to give uh, a nice kind of floor of black for us to put the next paints on top of, and then if any paint, anything kind of cracks or we see anything coming through that paint, then it's going to be black, and that's going to work perfectly with our colour scheme. Once that lead belcher was dry, I took some Agrax Earthshade and I put this on all the metal area that we painted previously. And it doesn't matter if this goes over that snake bite leather for the straps. It all kind of works together and that's no problem at all. And that's just going to dirty that metal up a little bit, give it a little bit of shade. And that's all we need to do for that. And then we're going to put a little bit down here as well. I thought, I wonder what would happen if I put it over the fur just to break it up from the grey on the cloak and the hooves. I thought if I put just a tiny bit of this Agrax Earthshade on his hair, on his head, on his mane, then I, I wondered if that would work. And you can't really see it at the end once it's all dry, but I think it's just going to make it a little bit different. Uh, you don't need to do this stage. It was just something I wanted to try out. Okay, now I'm taking some Martian Iron Crust, and this is a technical paint. This is awesome. It's like a, it's almost like sand, PVA and paint all mixed together. And you can just put this straight on a base and then it's going to um, like set and give you some nice texture. And I didn't want to spend too long 
doing the bases for these guys. I want to get them ready because we've got the campaign to play and um, I really want to get that underway. Now we've gone through all the rules and everything. And so I'm using this just to speed the process up a little bit. And I want them to look like they've left their kind of badlands and now they're walking across like some wastelands anyway where there, there's not many stones or rocks. The, the ground's a little bit uneven, a bit cracked. And so this fits with the narrative as well. And so it all works together nicely. So, but this is really great. If you haven't tried it, I can highly recommend getting some of these, but you could make your own with PVA paint and sand and it would still work nicely. The one to accompany this is another technical paint called Martian Iron Crust, very similar to Bugman's Glow, but a little bit darker. And this is a crackle paint. So when you put it on really thick, it cracks. And usually the thicker you put it on, the bigger the cracks. But I'm only using it on this part of the model because it's exactly the same color as the previous technical paint we used and so I'm going to use this just to color the rock and because I'm only putting it on thin it's barely going to crack you're not even going to see it cracked really so I'm just using it as a paint more than anything and there we go that's what it looks like when it's dry it can take a little while I put this right by the window in the sun and it took about an hour or so but otherwise it can take a few hours but next I'm going to take some sky gray put a little bit on a kitchen towel then I've got this very vegan makeup brush, which are really cheap, like two pound each, but it's super fine, really like soft um, bristles. And then I'm working that paint into the bristles, get as much paint off as I can on the paper towel. And then I test it on my hand a little bit to make sure it's right. And then once I'm happy, I just go really carefully at first, dry brushing over that completely dry Martian iron crust underneath. So it's really important that this is dry underneath to get this uh, effect to work. And so once I know how much I've got on that brush and how much is coming off, I can be a bit rougher and get a bit more on there. And I'm trying to get most of it on the outside and on the higher, more raised areas that are more exposed and then going a bit rougher as I get, get used to it. And as I get to that, the very tip there, I'm putting more and more on it because that's going to be the bit that's going to catch most of the natural light. And so once that's done, We'll just finish this off with a shade and then that's all we need to do for the base. But I'm just going to, while I've got this out and on the brush, I'm just putting a little bit on the back of the mane there and a little bit on the hair above the hoofs. And that's all I'm going to do for the hair. That's going to be that finished as well. So now it's time for some known oil and you can almost use this straight away. That dry brushing is really dry and doesn't you know take seconds to dry really once it's on. And so I'm putting this on now quite generously all over the model, trying to put most of it in the cracks and crevices again, and also under that rock where the, the light wouldn't come naturally. But I am giving the whole base a coat of this. So even over the top of the rock where you get most of the sunlight hitting it, that's getting a coat of this shade too. Now it's time to paint the rim. So I took some Abaddon Black, a little bit of blue tack on the end of a brush there. And then that's going to help, help me like stick the miniature onto the blue tack. And then this acts as a little turntable, making it super easy to paint the rim. And so I thought I'd see what it looked like in black. Normally I wouldn't do black for the rim. I'd do a color that complements the base or the model. Uh, but I thought black might work in this case. So I gave it a go and I put the black on, but I didn't like it. So then I chose a different color for the rim. And for that color, I went for some Vallejo paints. I went for a black. 0.950 in a grey and then a red 0.926 and I mixed together three parts black to one part grey to two parts red and gave it a good stir with a cocktail stick and then once that was all mixed together thoroughly you come out with this almost grey purpley colour and this is going to work much better I was much happier with this colour so I gave that a nice thick generous coat all around the rim and then that's the final stage and that was the model complete. And here he is, the great Bray Shaman, all finished to a tabletop ready standard with mostly contrast paints, some layers and some technical paints too. I was really happy how he turned out. The nice natural colours worked really well and I think this whole scheme works nicely with the entire warband. But for this particular miniature, it's this victim cloak that he's wearing that I think is really awesome. This patchwork cloak with all the different skins and leathers. I think this is definitely the best part of the model and I really had fun kind of thinking up a narrative for that and painting it all up. And there's the base and you can see it alongside the terrain I built. So the colours are going to match now that kind of reddy orange with lots of black kind of and then the grey highlight that's going to work nicely. And again, the, the terrain, the base all ties in with their narrative. 
And here's that terrain all laid out on the board. So this is all made from foam. And this is where the first battle is going to take place for the campaign. And we've got lots of height there as well. So that's going to come in handy, as you'll see in the first battle report. And there's a video I made on how to make this terrain if you'd like to give it a go yourself. But here's like my favourite pose with this miniature. I imagine him standing on top of the kind of um, archway there, looking up at the night sky, looking at the stars, waiting for that comet to kind of land and hit the earth. And this is what the whole kind of story behind my war band is based on. And you'll find out more about this if you come and join me for the campaign play. Let me know what you think about the Great Bray Shaman and how you think it kind of works with the contrast paints. I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts. And also I'll put links in the description to where you can get all the paints and everything that I used in the video. And there'll be affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to use those links. But they'll take you to Element Games where you can save up to 20% on your products there. And for every sale made through Link, I get a small commission and that helps me develop the channel and do more videos like this. So thanks so much for that support. I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And there'll be some more videos coming up for other members of the Warband. And they'll be quicker than this one. I always like to do one a little bit slower at first so we can almost go in real time and then do a couple more videos after for other members of the Warband that are a bit quicker. And so thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.